Hey guys, it's Charles here. Um, Gordon asked me to record a little speed session, and I figured I would do that for you guys. And if you get something out of it, then great. I hope you do. Um, so I'm not working from any reference or anything. I'm just kind of going to take this and see where it goes. It's one o'clock now. I'll give it about an hour and see where we're at at the end. Um, <clears throat> and I'll throw in comments as I go that I feel are relevant. Um, that might help someone wondering about uh, organic sculpting process. Um, the scene that I'm starting with is from, if you click on your light box in 4R3, it's the default Dynawax scene. I, it's just a fast way to get some clay into a scene in a Dynamesh. And um, it's a 64 resolution Dynamesh, so it's low enough that uh, you don't get too caught up in the details and the, and the mesh is still really responsive. If you hear jingling, that's my golden retriever in the background. Okay, so um, I like to approach this a lot like uh, traditional clay. And uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do with my ball of clay here is I'm going to go to my move brush and I have X symmetry turned on. And I'm going to go with a very large draw size here. And I'm just going to start kind of pulling out, turn perspective on for now, start kind of pulling out a torso shape. And what I'm focusing on here is kind of just the mass. Um, I want to get the rib cage area. I guess if I was doing it really, I would kind of drag that rib cage shape out. So, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, and um, I'm not going to refine it with turn this floor off. I'm not going to refine it with uh, any brushes or anything at this point. I just kind of want. get some clay down in there. And um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to invert a mask and drag out a neck here. Something like that. Go ahead and read Dynamesh. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, you hold down control, click and drag on the canvas to read Dynamesh. Uh, if you have a mask active, you need to click and drag on the canvas to clear your mask, and then click and drag again to redynamesh, and that will achieve this nice quadratic um, volumetric mesh again. Clean everything up. Okay, so it's way too early to start with any details again, so um, at this point, I'm going to start dragging out the head too, I guess. Just going from this same ball of clay. I could have appended a, uh, a sphere, merged it down, and then redynamished, but you know, it's all good. Okay, so I'm starting out, this is probably going to be humanoid. Maybe I'll go a little alien with it. Like I said, I have no reference or agenda. But I still want, you know, to keep this cranial mass and the facial area about half of that. So, I kind of like the thin, thin face. Maybe I'll keep that. It's kind of cool. But then I need a very thin neck. If he has not a lot of cranial mass, then it wouldn't need a whole lot to hold the head up. In fact, let's see, I'm going to get a mask lasso so I can get kind of an angle here. Control click on the mesh about, I don't know, a dozen times to soften that out. Invert it, and then just going to use the move transpose tool with the move function to uh, 
drag his neck up a little bit. Cool. Uh, and then I'm going to do a diamond mesh. So, these flaps are interesting. It's really an artifact of uh, dragging out the profile, but maybe I'll keep it for now. So, okay. The very first thing that I typically do is I go right to clay buildup. Clay buildup or clay tubes, kind of depends. Clay tubes is good, I think, for um, putting in, if you've ever sculpted with real clay, you do this kind of thing. You pack on, um, it's called clay tubes, but I think it should have been called clay balls. You, you pack on um, all this, uh, all these balls of clay like this. And then um, after you've done this, you see, <laughs> I, I really do try to um, to adopt a, a traditional workflow as much as possible because really it's what people are used to seeing is this client, you know. Um, my instructor at the uh, university, you know, he said, you want to be able to see the clay. Um, a student always wants to smooth out everything uh, as much as possible, you know, take and make it like glass and say, oh, it takes all the beauty out of it. So it's all the imperfection that really makes things interesting. So I'm just going to build up some form and volume here. I'm working on a in the brow ridge, maybe we'll put in a little bit of a sagittal crest. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the clay tubes I think is, is really good for building up form in this in this kind of you know typical scenario. The other tool that I'll use a lot is clay buildup. Uh, and clay buildup, I'll use a lot. Let's see. It's very much like clay tubes, but you can see it is much softer. So I'm going to put in here a frontal mass, put in cranium. So what I'm thinking about right now <laughs> is skeletal features, skeletal landmarks. Uh, sometimes I'll actually just draft out a skeleton or skull to build on. But in this case, um, since we've only got a couple more minutes, I'm going to go straight into uh, adding musculature and all the good stuff, all the wrinkles and all that business. Um, so. How would a mouth work in this? All of a sudden, it's not feeling very compelling to me. Um, usually, a way to correct that is to play with the proportion a little bit. I think the idea originally was that he had a very thin head. Let's not lose our original concept. He looks mean. He necessarily has to be a mean guy. Or I could come forward. So right now I'm just kind of playing around with it a little bit before um, really like hopping onto the train. Or one way or another. And I might just end up deleting this whole recording and doing something else. Just end up totally sucking. Which 90% of what I do ends up totally sucking. Really, the um, this is this stuff that I do is just for fun. Um, anything serious, 
that you're attempting you should never attempt without proper reference. Okay. Yes, reference is key. I am looking for slash three. A lot of people are big fans of the damn standard brush. I know I am too. Uh, but I find that slash three feels a lot more like um, what am I trying to say? It's a lot more like a wooden spoon edge or something, like um, or like a, a butter knife, you know. Um, damn standard has a little bit of a pinch to it, which is awesome because it will tighten things up. But right now, all I really want to do is just cut in some very uh, clear references. Get kind of an AP looking nose here. Um, so still working in a very skeletal fashion. You can see that um, some of the most, I don't want to say iconic, but um, the things that you look for in anatomy um, when you're dealing with busts is certainly the zygomatic. Um, this is it's got this very ovoid shape, and I think I want to keep that. I like how that's working out. So, Trim Dynamic um, is a brush that was re recently added to the ZBrush Arsenal. And I use it a lot for uh, making everything, establishing planes. Uh, if you work in a planar fashion with your with your sculpture with your drawing uh, it really lends a sense of form to everything that you do everything is planar everything is lines and the only thing that really as an artist you need to concern yourself with once you've got those planes established is uh, how you integrate them and how they work with other elements. Does that make any sense? Totally bad one. Uh, another cool thing about the trim dynamic is it, it it's uh, Z sub by default to knock down high spots. But if you hold down Alt, of course you get the inverse of that, and you can actually build up. Here it is. Sometimes very slowly, but um, so you can see I'm just building up the zygomatic. I say I have, I have two golden retrievers, and they've decided that they want to play right now. So, <laughs> sorry about the, the background noise. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a face happening here. Uh, I'm going to go back to clay buildup and really start to play around with the anatomy. Of the neck and shoulders. We get this kind of old, wrinkly, waddle thing going here. Uh, and one thing, you know, all necks share uh, uh, this like the esophagus area, the sternocleomastoidal muscles on the sides here, and then the trapezius running up the back of the neck. And coming down off onto the shoulder, going on the shoulder. Um, one thing I know, that if somebody's like near death, I guess you could see Omaha radius here. Um, one thing that I know I'm certainly guilty of is leaving all this way too prominent in the finished um, you know, sculpture or whatever. 
it's good to put them in there as reference like I'm doing right now, but ultimately, in any kind of real finished sculpture, unless it's incredibly skinny, you know, you're going to want to put some fat into this. What does this what does this guy eat for a living? Mexican food? Chinese? No, he, I, he definitely eats sushi. I'm getting a sort of a sushi vibe from this guy. <laughs> okay, so I use um, clay buildup. Uh, in a negative fashion as well, it's called clay buildup, but that just means that the brush continues to add the effect. So it's also very, um, very good for cutting out volumes. So add some kind of Adam's apple here. Mm -hmm. A chin and bottom lip, a little bit of an attachment between the chin and the lip. like a bulldog muzzle here. Let's go around that out some. It's like Zen. It's really relaxing to just kind of screw around when you uh, don't have an active project. Or if you do have an active project and you hit a wall with it and you just loosen up some. I'm just taking an hour to step back and feel artistic for a second is really uh, <laughs> volumes for your mental health. I know I'm, I'm spoiled. Uh, a lot of people don't have the option to take time to be artistic. A lot of artists don't have the time to be artistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does his mouth open? It's kind of a hinge thing here. Getting underneath this. So, like this just happened, but I'm not really thinking about how it happened. But now that it's there, let's see if that's the bottom edge. So here would be the corner of the jaw. So, and I don't think he's going to have ears. We're going to keep keeping with this ovoid look. Uh, I think instead he's going to have membranes. Like a frog or something. With my sushi thing, I'm like frog eat flies. Okay. Knock back the socket. I don't know why. Just to give me an idea. How deep that might be. And no, I have not dyna meshed here in a while. I'm pushing all this stuff around because when you dyna mesh, uh, I'm going to step it up one resolution. It's at 60, excuse me, 64 right now. And when I do the dyna mesh, I'll probably move it up to 128. But what will happen is everything will soften out, and I'll have to go over and do all of this again, basically. Which, trust me, is, is kind of a good thing because it allows you to refocus your effort. Right now, I'm really kind of like sculpting on autopilot. Um, it's kind of maybe a weird thing to say, but I'm just looking for things that look wrong and trying to fix them. OK, 
could do a better job of describing that. <laughs> Things that are not visually appealing, I am going back and trying to address. How's that? Not necessarily. Because this is guy, uh, I thought maybe when I started this, I had no idea. I thought maybe I would do a, um, just a, a you know, vanilla head sculpt, uh, some reference of some actor or actress or something, but you know, why do that? Have a little more fun. Try and do this membrane a little better. Um, we're going to go to the mask circle, and under the stroke type, I'm going to choose square and center, so that when I mask it, it comes right out from the middle of my mask. Hello. Oh yes. Okay. Didn't want that. Masks right through. There we go. That's better. And we go to inflate. Let me blur my mask once. Just inflate this. Smooth it down. Clear my mask. Hmm. I go to deformation. Okay. That looks like a set of earphones. Um, geometry, Dynamesh, we're going to double the Dynamesh resolution to 128. And control, click and drag and canvas to Dynamesh. See how everything just went really hard. Uh, let me go back to my mask pen. Okay. Let me build up again. See how everything just smoothed out? It's like you hit the whole sculpt with a blowtorch or like uh, lighter fluid. Nice, right? Um, at this point, I'm going to go to my subtool palette and the pen, a sphere 3D. If you have a set of eyeballs that you are especially proud of, uh, you can import them, but for this stuff, I just you know, I always just drop a sphere three in there. And I'm now scaling this out. Let's transpose. I said before, I feel like the transpose tool could be better. You know? Maybe that's just because I'm so used to the, you know, the old X Y Z manipulators that you get with Maya and that sort of thing. I always feel like I'm like it kind of gets away from me a little bit. Okay, big eye, little eye. I'm big eye. This guy's feeling kind of froggy. So now I'll duplicate this, merge it down. Oh, wait, whoa. Cancel. Oh, man. I got away from it. I want to remesh it. There it is. Delete the remesh. Ah, uh, okay. Mirror. I've got my eye selected. I want to go to deformation. I want to mirror this across the x-axis. Hey. All right. Now I can merge them down. Okay. Good. Um. So cute. 
Okay. I'm going to go back to my trim dynamic and I'm going to start bashing this mesh out because I'm wasting a lot of time. <clears throat> Get the angle to the back there. Flatten out the area where the what is it, the gladius? What it's called? Would be. Okay. And clay build up. And establish a kind of a pectoral. overlapping pectoralis striation and dropping into a deltoid and just building up some mass there for that and that's about as far as I'm not going to go into any arms or anything like that in an hour just kind of focusing on getting the character If he had nipples, they would be there. Nope. They would be there. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's cut this in. Cut real deep there for the. Latissimus. So, real quick, you can see I'm just going to sketch in latissimus, I'm going to sketch in trapezius, and I remember these as just sort of like a shake vocabulary after studying so much anatomy reference. I don't claim to get it right, but you know what? It's an alien, so as long as that's Roughly there. It's all good. Okay. Uh, I use a lot of times. I use the uh, clay buildup as like a cheap trim dynamic, you know. Too, it, it's really a pretty flat brush, but. Trim dynamic is still good, still best for, for planar, planar work. And right now I'm just literally tapping on the tapping on the mesh just like I would with a wood block. You might be able to hear me tapping away at the at the tablet there. I mean that's that's how you do it with clay, right? Most, most clay sculpture is a wood block and a rake, a loop. That's about it. Three tools that make up everything that you do. So, that's pretty good. The, the thing about uh, speed study, it's really the hardest thing I think for me to keep in mind is that we're just looking at large, large forms, not any kind of detail. You're just wanting to get the, the feel right more than anything. For example, he's got this long ass skinny neck. Why would I make him really buff? So I can tell I've already gone overboard on the on the musculature. I'm going to be very, very, very unmuscular. Like I don't know, like junior high school girl, not muscular. It's a very hint of what's going on just there with the skeletal structure. 
I think I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Tap, tap, tap. What this will do is start to make your scallop look a little bit lumpy. Uh, you can go with a much larger brush to help offset some of that. Uh, and of course, there's nothing wrong with stroking on the mesh. Sometimes a little bit of a tap drag will. Uh, so you see, I, I, I wasted, I wasted time again putting all that um, this uh, muscular, musculature striation and all that. Why, why did I even bother? You know, I guess in my mind it helps me to establish what's happening with the character, but none of that's actually going to show up, especially in the finished um, sculpture. Almost none of it anyway. So, yeah. um, H polish is good for this kind of thing too, if you're wanting to get really planar, because H polish. Uh, respects edges much more than trim dynamic. Trim dynamic will soften edges, uh, whereas H polish uh, really tends to define them. So if you're wanting to do a very planar sculpture or or a hard surface sculpture, then H polish certainly H polish is the way to go. But um, I find that, you know, I never use the standard brush anymore. It used to be just about all that I ever used was a standard brush, it seems like. But the standard brush, um, the standard brush really, I think, feels too balloony anymore. It's like a form brush. It'd be good for getting form down, but because uh, I prefer a clay sort of traditional clay approach, all the all the surface imperfection doesn't bother me at all. I really enjoy the uh, the variation because uh, for this. To be finished, you know, it's got to go to secondary detail, tertiary detail, and then the polish phase. Which even in the polish phase, I would still leave some you know, hints of the material underneath it, which would be clay. Uh, which, you know, I didn't think I'd be able to just keep up writing commentary, but apparently I was wrong. I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> so, incredibly boring for someone that's watching this. I guess you can understand why I time lapse these things uh, when I want to show them. And for every one that I actually put up for critique or comment on the internet, I probably do, I don't know, two or three that. That I just don't feel are worth even showing. I just throw them away. Nothing's really that precious, you know. You should be able to, at any point, wipe out where you're at and start over. If you're not okay with doing that, then maybe you are missing opportunities. Like if I decided all of a sudden, you know, I think I want this guy to have this big, stupid jaw. Then I should be able to just scoop this all out and just go for it, you know. Because especially with um, ZBrush 4, it allows so much freedom to do just that. Anything that you artistically want to do, it's it's really coming 
to the point where you, you have no more technological boundaries. Am I going to give him a big stupid jaw? No, not right now, because I am trying to keep an eye on the clock. And uh, from here on out, I'm going to pretty much focus on just the, the base, I think. So right there, that right there was the um, trim dynamic with Alt. You can see how it really did a great job, I thought, of um, smoothing out that upper lip using Alt. It kind of just brings everything up to the same level. And if you're careful along the edges, I mean, it can do an almost a, uh, it can almost do a H polish sort of thing. But as soon as you roll over the edge, you see where it gets kind of uh, smooths out, which we don't want. Pinch a little too much, so I'm going to smooth it. Okay, um, how about come back to clay build up and let's think about how this guy might express emotion. Um, I want to look for those little furrows. Start to kind of build in some wrinkling here. This is with the clay buildup tool, clay buildup brush. I just want to put in some of this thing. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't really have a nasolabial fold. So what I'm going to do is. Accentuate this area at the edge of the nostril. Since there is no nasolabial fold. Okay. Big one. Um, now, for, I guess he needs an eye. That'd be good. Eyelids. Eyelids are great for allowing uh, emotion. You notice almost any emotion is accentuated by squinting. If somebody's happy, they smile, but if they're really happy, they, their eye squints up. Alright, we'll go transparent. Get the ghost turned on so I can sculpt through the sub tool. And you know, I spent all that time knocking the socket back. Well, now I'm going to build it back out. I know, I know. Silly me. And then I'm building it back out so that I can pull in. Eyelids. This is uh, again this is clay build up. It's got this square alpha, so it does a really pretty sweet job of eyelids. A little bit of a bag. Now for the top lid. In the wild eye. I'm working this around in little tiny, tiny circles initially for form building. Okay. And then I'm coming back long strokes, sort of smooth it out. Um, 
if you find that you're having difficulty with your eyelids um, looking smooth, don't forget about Lazy Mouse. Uh, the Lazy Mouse technology was such a godsend. For those of us who do not have rock steady hands, especially on a, on a tablet or with a mouse, my god. But no lazy mouse here, this is just. Oh, and steady. Okay. Cave that back in. And then build up some kind of tear duct looking thing. Okay, so the, the, those polygons are stretched beyond, way beyond what they should be. But it's okay. And I'm going to do one more bag that kind of falls off of the um, zygomatic bone. upper eyelid, we'll let that kind of flow naturally back into this tympanic membrane. And um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and redine a mesh. And come back with uh, slash three and now stroke lazy mouse turn the lazy mouse I usually work lazy mouse up around 30 for the radius and 10 to 12 for the smoothing And again, this is, I think about slash three like it's a butter knife. So, you know, if this were a piece of actual clay, where would I take that, that butter knife to? I'm going to work it in here. There, and right underneath there. You know, it's anything that you that you that you do can be uh, integrated and worked back in. So I find that this is an effective technique. Maybe not really correct, but um, or whatever. But it's you know, certainly an effective technique at adding uh, detail. Forehead wrinkles. Cool. Uh, I know what this guy reminds me of. He reminds me of one of the um, one of the horn players from the Cantina scene in Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you. 
So his mouth opens this way. It's the bottom of his jaw. He would have the wrinkles of his skin coming this way. Maybe some cross hatch. And as always happens, I'm really quickly running out of time. So let's start to integrate these wrinkles a little bit. Um, it's one question that Gordon had that I noticed, or I remember he mentioned. Uh, he tries to use the inflate brush. Let me bump the Dynamesh up one more time. Uh, and whoa! That was awesome. What the hell was that? Directly divide them. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Um, anyway, rather than using the flake brush, I use, again, clay tubes to do wrinkles like around the eyes, just like this. And I draw out. little um, wrinkles. Just to puff them up a little bit and give them a little bit more uh, life. bag on the eye, so I'm going to cross hatch that, or cross, cross contour, rather, to give it a little bit more interesting texture, rather than just going whoop and running it that way. That's not very interesting. By going across the form, I'm uh, I'm able to add a little bit more information for the viewer. So I'm done. I got 10 more minutes here. So what I'm going to really do at this point is I'm just going to focus on what the viewer is going to focus on, and that is the eyes. First and foremost. These human beings, I think, we always tend to look at the eyes first. So if I take 10 minutes on the eyes, then that's what it'll be. But if I finish the eyes and I move on, then I'll move on. Obviously, I'll move on to the nose. One thing to try and do is to try and build up your sculptures uh, all over to all over the same level of detail. Uh, by doing that, you never really get caught with your pants down, so to speak. Tear duct. Man, I hate that. Anytime I start scratching too hard, ZBrush will uh, drop in that stupid straight line. See, I've got one stuck across his face there. I don't know why that happens. Anybody knows, let me know. Let's see, there it was again. 
I would love to not have that happen all the freaking time. Okay, so I'm going to put on the lazy mouse so that I can get a better uh, lid. Notice how wide my brush is compared with the area that I'm tackling. Sometimes you want to go with a way wider brush than you think you do. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Trim Dynamic. I'm going to hit Solo so I'm not looking at those eyeballs anymore. And I'm just going to, with Trim Dynamic, come in and dress this edge up. So, and holding Alt so that it's inflating. Also, smooth that down like that. Speaking of smooth, now I'll run back in through and smooth that all out a little bit. Just so it's not quite so shaky looking. Um, but you really you definitely want to have sharp, nice sharp sculpture. If your work looks like um, like it's been hit with a uh, wet washcloth and everything's smoothed down, unless you're working in like vinyl toys or something, ugh. Just always looks so generic, you know. <clears throat> okay, one more thing too that I'd like to do, just to kind of finish, um, is I'll turn on lazy mouse for my pinch brush, and with the pinch brush, I'm going to set the intensity way up to like 40, so I get results. I, mean, I find that 20 is a little bit too conservative, but with 40, and also it has to do with how how hard you are or how much pressure you use typically when you're when you're using your uh, Wacom tablet, Wacom, Wacom. I personally I have a very light touch on the tablet, so. Um, I have to turn my settings up a bit. Other people, they may not have that problem because they really have a heavy hand. So because the Dynamesh and there's no such thing as a real topology that's going on here, it's just a design sculpt, I will pinch the shit out of all this stuff. It's St. Patrick's Day and he is not wearing green. A little green man. Uh, because pinch is a real good way to, along with um, trim dynamic, to add a feeling of solidity of form very quickly. Don't like how that. that 
I can. Okay. So, and then a lot of times, um, take this further, what I would do then is I would rake over the whole thing of First, of, uh, you see what I've got. I've got my, um, I got my trusty old clay build-up tool out again, and I'm just coming through and very quickly um, beefing up some of these areas that have been smoothed over in the DynaMesh process. And uh, to finalize, then I would want to take my, um, I would want to rake everything out and integrate everything really well. Um, you, you could, uh, Ryan Kingsline also came up with a rasp brush that I think is really good for uh, polishing up your your, t your sculpture without having to resort to the, sh the smooth brush. Uh, if you do a, just a Google search for Kingsland Rasp Brush or Kingsland Sandpaper Brush, uh, you'll come up with a whole bunch of reference to that. Okay, it's officially one hour, and maybe one last thing to do, it's really popular these days, is grab your clip curve brush and whoops. block out the, um, the torso. Hey, wrong way. Just uh, yeah, make it look a little neater. Um, so that's oh, uh, that's an hour. Um, he's kind of cute. I think uh, you know. Can I continue to work on him? Maybe. Because what, what happens a lot of times is, you know, I'll start uh, a speed sculpt like this, just, just to kind of loosen up or whatever. You come up with a pretty decent design, and um, you never actually do much of anything else with it because it was just for temporary <laughs> exploration or whatever. But uh, anyway. That's the the meat of what I'm doing. So I could probably spend a, another hour on this guy before I would call it finished as far as the design sculpt goes. So um, a final would be about two hours. This has been one hour, so the basic forms are all in place here. Um, from this point, we'll be really developing secondary, all the secondary detail. Uh, and even get into some tertiary detail if I felt like I was on board with that. So, anyway, thanks a lot, you guys. I appreciate your attention, and uh, I hope to see what you're doing coming up on the boards. Okay, bye.